To introduce myself, my name is Kevin Ward. I am the VP for Petrosis in Europe, Russia and Africa. And it's my job today to take you through the Wealth Failure Analysis module, which is a, a module within our Prospects and Leads database. So let me jump on to this slide here. Uh, this slide um, really just tries to explain to people who perhaps haven't heard of PLDB or, or maybe not entirely familiar with Petrosis itself, um, exactly where our software fits into the oil and gas industry. Um, so as a software company, Petrosis develops software in three key areas. We develop uh, technology for mapping and visualisation. We develop surface modelling, um, algorithms and process, uh, processes, uh, as well as volumetrics. And we do uh, direct connectivity um, and data management with um, other vendors um, in the industry. Um, and the products that we um, that we have from this uh, technology, then we have Petrus Pro, which is our subsurface mapping application, and that's probably what we're we're best known for. Um, we've also written some modules for other companies, so we have a, a module inside of Petrel um, that we wrote for Slumberge, and we have a module inside of um, some Shell uh, Shell's own in-house software, uh, which allows them to create maps. What I'm talking about today is our data management um, capabilities. So we have a, a corporate um, master data store called DBMap Web, um, which is a um, corporate database which is um, which uses the PPDM data model to store all of your company's well data or seismic or GIS data, records management, these sort of things. Um, and one of the modules within that, uh, which you can run as a standalone tool, is called uh, PLDB, uh, which stands for the Prospects and Leads Database. So it's a, um, it's a portfolio management tool. Um, does the uh, risking of uh, resources um, right through to reserves and drilling opportunities um, and tracks your portfolio as it um, moves in time. So how uh, how your prospects are evolving um, and what uh, sort of work programmes need to go into those um, to get those drill ready. Um, and so that's kind of roughly what PLDB does. And a, a module that we created along with a client um, last year um, or the year before is called Well Failure Analysis. Um, and that's uh, uh, if you're already using PLDB, then you'll have access to WFA. Um, if you're not using PLDB, then WFA can be used um, as a standalone tool itself. So you don't necessarily need PLDB, um, but the, the workflow, as I'll show um, over the next 20 minutes or so, um, really does uh, feed well into the PLDB um, workflow. So that's how everything fits in. Let me just go through, I think there's another two slides and then I'll get into a live demonstration. Um, so when we're doing risking, we're risking prospects um, and calculating probabilistic volumetrics. Um, we're often asked, no matter which software you use, we're asked to enter risk values um, for play elements. So what is the, the risk of a, a reservoir not being present? What is the risk of a seal failing? These sort of questions are often asked. Um, and we're asked to, to enter these into software as discrete values, which is quite a tricky business because it's very difficult to quantify the risk um, that a seal might fail, for example. Um, and the problem with trying to quant or not being able to quantify it is that as geologists um, or geoscientists, we're typically uh, very um, optimistic about the prospect that we've spent a lot of time working in. Um, and this paper from, uh, from 1976, uh, which um, a lot of subsequent papers on uh, risk and, and human bias have, uh, have referenced, um, states that having no good quantitative idea of uncertainty, there is an almost universal tendency for people to understate it. Um, so what it's saying is, is really to, um, to have a good um, idea of uncertainty, we really need to be able to quantify it um, effectively. So the way that we can do this then is we can use existing well data. Um, most basins around the world now when we're exploring, there's always um, some amount of information we can gather. Um, and if we can use that data effectively, we can better quantify the risk um, as we go ahead um, and drill new wells. So what I've done here is I just created a quick um, spreadsheet um, in Excel. Um, and you can do this sort of thing in Excel when you have, in this case, 10 wells. So we can view the data statistically in Excel. So we can look at uh, these 10 wells and we can look at where the charge is present, um, where the seal is present, for example. So you can see that there's really um, sort of low risk of a charge or seal failure um, for this play. There's a, a little bit of a, a risk in the trap being absent, so 20% of the wells have failed. 
um, because they didn't have a, a trap present. And you can see a significantly higher number um, of wells failed because there wasn't a, a reservoir present and um, with effective porosity. We also view the data spatially, so we can plot those 10 wells for that play um, on a map and we can see um, where the, the wells are failing on a uh, trap or reservoir, etc. And we can try to make predictions um, about where uh, our prospect um, might fit into these, these failures. The problem with, with doing this, this is you're really going to only have 10 wells in one play to work with. Um, this is an example here where we have around 100 wells um, on a spreadsheet and I've deliberately made it sort of low resolution to try and fit it all in. It becomes unmanageable very quickly trying to, to handle um, 100 or so wells. Um, and quite often you'll have significantly more than 100 wells to, to work with um, based on previous uh, drilling data. And often uh, wells don't just intersect one play, uh, they might intersect multiple plays. Um, and uh, one of these plays might be shared between a few wells and then um, other plays might only have one or two wells that are drilled into it. So trying to um, combine all your wells with which plays they're drilled into, it suddenly in a spreadsheet becomes very difficult to manage and also very difficult to track the history of the changes and uh, what's the most up-to-date spreadsheet you're using and, and these sort of questions. So, so very quickly, um, the problem becomes trying to manage the, the mass of data, you know, accessing the, the current most up-to-date, most reliable and most complete data set um, is very problematic. And this is where WFA fits in. Um, the well failure analysis module was built, um, as I showed at the start, um, inside the DBMAP web um, uh, standard repository. So it's a very um, secure repository uh, with very easy to use tools. Now there is a, a slide that I'm going to come back to which, which goes through point by point what WFA does. Um, but rather than go into that, I thought I would now just jump out to a, a live demo um, and just run through that. Hopefully that will give you an idea um, of what uh, the module itself actually does. Um, now, before I do that, I'm just going to turn off my camera because, as I mentioned earlier, I had some problems with the uh, bandwidth. So hopefully this will help somewhat. Uh, sorry for seeing all these horrible screens. I will get back to the, to the main one in a minute. Right, hopefully. Uh, right, hopefully you can now see my uh, my web browser. Uh, if you can't, hopefully someone, one of my colleagues will jump in and save me, but hopefully you see the, the web browser. Um, now, this is what uh, DBMAP Web um, looks like. You can see I've, I've logged into this web browser interface as a user, and this user has a particular set of permissions. So straight away, it's, it's better than a spreadsheet because not everybody can make the same changes. Um, Things often have to go through stage gates or peer reviews before they get approved and, and put into the database. Um, and there are several modules within this. As I mentioned earlier, people, uh, companies use this to store all of their corporate wells or seismic data, um, GIS data, records management. The thing that I'm going to focus on today is, um, is well failure analysis and uh, PLDB, the Prospects and Leads database. Now, before I go into WFA, I'm going to go into Prospects and Leads and just go right down into an opportunity to see how we actually calculate um, resources. So I'm going to click on this prospect here called the Challenger 1 prospect. And I am going to go into, uh, once this opens up, the prospect targets. And I'll look at the prospective resources for this, um, this particular target. Now, as I mentioned earlier, whether you're using PLDB or some other system to do the calculations, um, we're often asked the same questions about probability. I've clicked edit. I'm going to pretend that I am editing um, this target. And you'll see we're asked to enter values for the probability of charge, for seal, for reservoir, and for closure or, or trap. Um, we've got some other customised ones in this particular database. Uh, these were to support the GOX data set we were loading in. Um, so just ignore the top three. I'm going to focus on these bottom four. It's all about the risk of these play elements. Now we can have the play risk um, entered, so a standard risk for the entire play for the entire basin that we might be working in. We can also use a risk from common risk segment maps. So if I have common risk segment polygons, um, that will automatically pick up 
uh, where this prospect fits into those polygons and what the, the risk would be. Um, but if I don't have those, I'm going to enter the localised risk manually. So I need to define in here what is the risk that the, the reservoir might, uh, might fail. Um, and I can enter numbers into here. Um, so if, say I've put 0 0.5, so 50-50 chance of a reservoir, 50-50 chance of a seal, for example. Um, there are two problems with, there are two difficulties with this. First of all, it's very difficult to quantify risk. Um, so I've entered 0 0.5 here, which is 50-50. Um, in reality, you need to do a lot more work than just um, stick in a number here. The second thing is that these numbers have a very high bearing on the outcome. So I've entered 0 0.5 um, twice for these two, uh, two elements, and already the numbers that will go into the Monte Carlo calculations are going to be multiplied by 0 0.25 in many cases. So it, the overall numbers will change drastically depending on what I enter um, into this system here. So they're, they're difficult to quantify and they have a very high um, influence on the outcome. So therefore, we really need to work hard to get these numbers as accurate as we can. So I'm going to cancel out of this. Now go into WFA and show you how WFA um, tries to help you uh, quantify these numbers um, better and hope, hopefully give you a chance to then justify your numbers um, at a peer review. So I've clicked on well failure analysis, um, clicked on search, I'll just expand this down here. And the first thing I'm going to just talk about is the general look and feel um, of this module. Um, we can, uh, it's, a, it's a web interface module, so it's very easy. There's a low learning curve to get to use um, a lot of this. So as a user, I can very easily come in and let's say I was trying to um, find uh, some data about a particular play in a particular part of a basin. I can easily just come in and filter for plays. Um, and then once this expands, I can drag this over here and show you all of the plays that I have um, data for. I'm just going to click on this first one here. Um, and at the moment, I have 1,300 wells which have uh, well failure um, data loaded into my system. Um, I'm filtering for this play. And you can see it's already cut it down to 246 wells which have pieces of information for this particular play. And I can further filter this. Um, there's a part of the, the basin called block 15. And if I put in dash 15, it will just find the wells that, um, that are located within this, uh, this dash 15 uh, block. And you can see we've now got down to 16 wells. Now some of these wells um, actually have dash 15 in the middle of the name. So this one's actually in a block called uh, number two. So I don't need that one, and I don't need that one, and I don't need that one. So I can just manually toggle those off. Um, now, there are various ways you can filter the data in here. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but just to just to show you as a couple of examples, it's very easy to build in filters. We can customise these filters to your needs so you can filter through the data you need. And then it's very easy to either type in some data, toggle stuff on and off, or even use the advanced search options. Either way, the advantage is we are now going from a, um, from a, a lot of data down to the very few specific wells that we need to find the data on uh, very quickly. Um, now that we've done that, I'm going to just click on one of these wells and just um, go into a little bit more detail. So let's say I was trying to find particular information about this specific well. Um, how can I do that? Well, first of all, you can see the summary on the right hand side. You can see we've got two plays that have um, been successful and one play that has failed. Um, I can click on this PDF button here and this will generate um, a PDF report uh, which gives me some high level information about this particular well. And I can include that um, in a report. I could email it to, um, to colleagues um, or I could just view it from my own information. So you see we get the typical um, header summary information about the well. Um, and then we get the play analysis. So you can see play one very clearly has um, been successful and play three down the bottom again, very clearly successful. Play two, however, um, has failed. You can see that based on the red colours here. And you can see very clearly it's failed based on the absence of a trap. And we have some other information in this standard report. Again, because it's a, a database we're working with, we can easily change this report to suit your needs. So if you needed other types of data into here, very easy to change that report so that we can um, you can generate those reports uh, regularly and um, based on the data that you, you need. Um, so we've looked at the high level information. We can now go into the well in a bit more detail down here. So I'll click on well summary um, just to start off with. 
and you'll see for well summary, you get the sort of classic well headed information. So general information, depths, locations, drilling dates, some other information, um, all the sort of standard stuff there. One of the things I really wanted to show here is this idea of data quality, because again, it's, a, it's another big advantage over using uh, spreadsheet data to manage this sort of stuff. Um, you'll see these circles um, throughout the, the wells. Um, now, the left-hand side of the circle um, is related to confidence, and the right-hand side of the circle is related to quality. So we call these the confidence quality um, measures or confidence quality circles. And if I start on the right-hand side with the quality, the quality is defined by a set of rules. So click on these rules just to show you the ones that I have in this system. Again, your rules might need to be different. We can customise them um, to suit what you would class as being a high quality piece of information. So we've said that the well must have a source, must have a status, must have a reference depth, like a Kelly Bushing, for example, um, should have a TD value, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it should have a valid location and a uh, valid CRS. That's a sort of classic one we might include there. So we can see that all of these wells meet that criteria. They're all high quality. Um, only one well has passed the confidence check. The confidence is uh, subjective. And if I click on this uh, button here, it will show you how the confidence has changed in this well. So when it was entered initially into the database in 2016, it didn't have any confidence. Now that it's passed this internal assessment, so it's passed a peer review or a decision gate, um, whatever you want to call it, it's passed some sort of test, um, a user who has the, the relevant permissions, so in this case a user called Tester, has marked that well um, as having high confidence. So I can now see that because it's passed its internal review, this well has high confidence, high quality, it's a good piece of data um, to be using. Some other information we can get about the well, we can, uh, can look at source analysis. I don't have any for this well, but we can look at the source um, and maturity of the source rock if that information is available. We can look at temperatures and pressures of, uh, of the reservoir um, if that's useful. And again, we can customise these tabs if, if there's other types of data you really need to see and uh, that you would like to see for, for doing well failure analysis, we can easily customise the database to to pull those, those bits of information out. Um, and finally, um, in my opinion, as a geoscientist, the most important part um, of this is the play analysis. And you can see as we, we go through here, there's lots and lots of information about the, um, about the play, about the age of the play, um, and about the play elements, what were present, what were absent. Um, and if I click on the middle one, you'll see if there's a failure, the reason for that failure, in this case, the trap was the reason for the, the failure. Um, so we've looked at the well individually. The, the other um, real advantage of using this system is being able to report on more than one uh, well. So looking at uh, the um, looking at the wells in a combination with, um, with other wells. So we're looking at uh, the entire data set. So what I'm going to do to do that is to get rid of the filters that I had on earlier. And hopefully this will um, increase the number of wells I'm looking at back to the 1300 or so that I have um, in this database. Okay, so 1300 wells. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and uh, run a couple of reports to, to, uh, to get some information um, on the entire um, data set. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look at some standard reports that I have for WFA. And um, if I click on this middle one here, this just looks at uh, it filters, plays out by, uh, sorry, filters the um, the wells out based on play selections and based on the risk of, uh, of the charge. So I could say I'm interested in a particular play. And it's the one called Teapot that I want to use. So it's this one here. So I'll toggle on Teapot, click OK. So for this play here, I could then say, well, how many wells have failed on charge? How many have failed on reservoir, seal, etc.? Just going to leave those blank just now. Um, I'll click on the query to show you that these are just um, SQL queries. So if you're good at writing in uh, SQL language, you can easily write these. If not, we can include some standard um, reports for you that you might want to run on a regular basis. And we can either export the report um, to an Excel file um, or run the report. I'm going to click on run the report and while that's generating, I'll just mention that uh, a lot of users will use the export report um, so that they can feed the output into, uh, um, into more advanced visualisation software. Things like Power BI and Spotfire are the sort of classic things. If people want to do more detailed analysis um, on the data, um, they use 
WFA to get the data out into the right format, filtered for the data they are specifically interested in. And then they can use stuff like Spotfire and Power BI to really visualise it, um, really look at the statistics of the, uh, the data as well. Um, and these are the, the wells. So you can see, I just looked at this um, particular play here um, called the Teapot Dome um, play, or the Teapot play rather. And there are 261 wells which have um, intersected this play. I could then go over here and look at all of the information for those, or maybe I want to filter it. So if I look at the uh, track, for example, type in absent there, um, we'll see that it then filters this list to show me that out of the 261 wells, 107 of those wells have failed on the, the absence of a trap. So, um, so you can then start to work out the rough sort of statistics um, about what you're expecting if you were drilling a new well, what's the likelihood it's going to fail on, uh, on a trap or a reservoir, sealed charge, etc. Um, now, I will close this, um, this report down here. So, so far I've been focused very heavily on the the statistical um, views of the data, but looking um, at the data spatially is another big advantage um, of WFA. So what I'm going to do is rather than um, continue in here, I'm going to open up Petrus's Pro and I have a, a map displayed over the area we've been looking at, which is this teapot dome area. Um, and I'm going to toggle on um, this icon here. So what this has done is this has set up um, a traffic light symbology pulling the data from the WFA database and displaying it spatially inside Petrus' Pro. If I double click on this layer here, um, we'll see how this is set up. So it's set up to point to the database. Um, it uses um, a WFA template uh, that we've created. It's filtered based on a particular play that we're interested in, and it splits the, the outputs into the charge, reservoir, seal and trap. So I can easily go into an area that I'm interested in. And I can look um, at the, the pie chart um, for the, the play success. And I'll maybe just make them a bit smaller just so we can uh, we can see them uh, a bit better. Uh, so let's change this down to five. I'll just make that a bit smaller. Hopefully that will help us see them a bit easier. Okay, so they're all sort of spread out now. So so let's say I was um I was interested in exploring this prospect here. I can now see very clearly the well surrounding it, which ones have failed and why they've failed. And you can see clearly from the bottom right, most have failed um, due to the absence of a trap. So that would be something I would I would want to flag in the, the risk, and it was something I'd want to do a bit more investigation about. Um, I will point out at this point, I'm using Petrus as Pro um, just because I have it available. We have experience of, um, of people using WFA with ArcGIS, for example. So it's very easy to connect the database to other uh, mapping and visualization tools. And we have a lot of experience of connecting to different systems. Um, so that's not an issue. It's just that um, it's got a very nice link to Petrus Pro, um, as you would expect. Um, so I've looked at the, the overall traffic light symbology where I could um, look at play fairway map analysis or common risk segment map analysis. And um, we can also split it based on individual um, parameters as well. So in this case, we're just looking at the, the reservoir risk. Um, so again, I can see um, in the area that I'm interested in how many wells have failed based on reservoir um, and where they're located. So is there, you know, is there a channel running through the centre of the basin? Maybe that's why some wells are, are picking that up and others are not. So it can start to give me a better understanding of what the risk might be. Um, for the prospect that I'm now exploring in. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good um, kind of overview of the, the system. Let me go back to PowerPoint and I'm just going to finish with this last slide um, and then I'll, I'll uh, pause and see if there's any questions. Um, so what does or how does WFA help um, with the quantifying of, uh, of risk analysis? Well, the first reason is that it can take an unlimited number of wells um, and plays. Um, so it's a very secure repository where we can store um, as many pieces of information as we, we need. It's got a very easy to use front end. It's all web interface, so really low learning curve. And once the system is, is set up, the data is loaded in, the user can just easily toggle on and off the, the filters and run the reports um, and then uh, display the, the spatialized um, views of the data that we need. We can view information about the wells individually. So to click on individual wells, generate a PDF or look at the the, uh, the well summary information to see um, 
what might be happening in this way will give us some, some really high level and quick information. We can query and report on individual um, or multiple wells, so we can run these reports and as I mentioned, we can customise these reports to suit your needs. We can connect to different mapping packages to visualise the data, either as the traffic light symbology or looking at individual play elements and thinking about how those relate um, to, uh, to opportunities that we might be trying to explore. And you can connect um, to more powerful visualisation tools. I'm um, sorry if these icons are just popping off the bottom of my screen there, but we can connect to classic things like Power BI and Spotfire to do more um, advanced visualisation um, and presentation of the, uh, the statistical data um, that we've, we've loaded in and we're managing within WFA. Um, and ultimately, this helps us quantify the risk. Um, so if we're now entering these numbers into a risking package such as PLDB, it's now much easier for us to justify um, what numbers we've entered based on the historical data um, that we have available to us. Um, OK, so looks like I've managed to finish just before the, the half hour. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining us. Hopefully that's a, a good overview. Um, Susanna, if you're still on the call, are there any questions in the chat log? Hi, Kevin. Um, thanks very much for sharing WFA. Um, they, we have a couple of questions um, that have come through, um, so we can address those now. Um, the first question, do you need to have Petrisys Pro to be able to run uh, and use WFA? Okay, um, nice easy one to start. So no, uh, no you don't. Um, we, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the client that we, um, that we wrote WFA for um, initially um, actually used uh, ArcGIS um, to display it. Um, and so we, um, we helped them a bit, do they use a, an FME connection to ArcGIS? Um, and I would imagine um, if there are other mapping systems that people want to use, then it would be a similar story where uh, we can help them connect to our database. Um, as I mentioned, the WFA stuff is that robust database sitting behind it, so nice and easy um, to, uh, to use some of our database experts just to connect that data and visualise it the, the way you need to. Thanks, Kevin. And then um, the other question, uh, the only other question we have is just um, how do you get the data into the WFA module in the first place if you have a number of spreadsheets um, available? Um, so, so yeah, the, the classic way that we've, we've seen people load data into WFA um, is that they've already got existing spreadsheets with all this data managed um, and there are some um, import options. In fact, I'll maybe just show you very quickly if I've still got the screen here. Um, under the, the admin tab, um, again, if you've got certain permissions, you can come in and use these. Um, and there's a data exchange option here um, to import the data uh, into the, the system. I, I should have mentioned earlier, we, um, we can either host this, um, this database, either cloud hosted, which is becoming the, the more a modern popular option um, or it can be locally installed um, in a server um, at your site. Uh, regardless of how it's actually hosted, you'll come in here and find that there are some import um, options. This one here, Well Failure Analysis Importer, for example, you can import um, a spreadsheet in a particular format and it loads it in um, to the database. If you have spreadsheets in a different format or if you're using some other um, uh, system to, to store your current data, then we could um, easily um, customise this to, to suit those needs. So we've got a lot of experience of writing scripts and queries to, to pull that data um, and in a more sort of automated fashion. Um, hopefully that answers that one. Um, OK, so is that just the, the two questions, Susanna? Yes, that's it. Cool, thanks for that. Well, Look at that, it's just gone half past, it's perfect timing. Um, well, my uh, my email address is on the screen. Um, we'll get this video onto the website uh, or onto LinkedIn in due course. Um, but thanks again for, for joining. And uh, if you've got any questions, please just ping me an email and I'll get back to you. Um, thank you, everyone.